But I've actually, uh, God has given me something, even this morning. So I'm hoping that He will, as He always does, He, he will help me. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Colossians chapter 1. You guys are there, say amen. amen. I kind of came, I'm actually going to kind of come off of this from Wednesday night's Bible study. Uh, if you guys weren't able to get on to Facebook, um, it's been a struggle here lately. I'm not able to get on the YouTube for whatever reason. I think I need to download some new software. Uh, maybe that might be the issue. But it seems as if Facebook, YouTube is not allowing me to continue. But I'm able through Facebook to uh, to go live. So I'm going live. I can't go live on YouTube unless I have a thousand subscribers. Isn't that crazy? But it's getting dark out there, guys. It's getting dark. They'll let anybody have an account as long as you're not going against the grain. And I happen to go against the grain. I'm not, I'm not out there in your face though. But I am not willing to submit to the uh, mindsets that people are trying to, or, or that the system is wanting us to be a part of. We are not a part of that system. We are a part of the kingdom of God. Amen? And, and so we have to be mindful of this. This home that we live in is not, this place that we live in is not our home. That's right. Amen? It's not. Our home is where? Heaven. In heaven. Okay, so one day we will transition over, but it probably won't be today. Okay, unless our job is done, uh, God's not going to call us home as yet. Okay, we've got some work to do. Amen. And until that work is finished, my job will be here. So, Father, have your way with us this morning. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, that you have uh, called us to be coming out of darkness. So, in Jesus' name, I command the light of Christ to come forth and to show us the way that we can walk according to your light and according to righteousness and not according to the darkness of this present age. God, give us everything we need today. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, and I guess I will start in verse number 27, okay? It says, to them who is the saints, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of His glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. To this end, I also labor, striving according to His working which works in me mightily. You guys see that? Now this is Paul talking to the church in Colossae. And Paul, uh, back in verse 14, or 24, he actually is, is in this place of admonishing. He's in this place of encouraging. He, 
he's telling everyone there at the church, listen, I, I, I'm seeing something good. Amen. He is seeing something good. And you know what? I am seeing something good. Amen. I am seeing something good. And the neat thing about it is, guys, is it's not according to what we may see physically, but it's what God is doing in us, uh, you know, in the inner man, right? I'm seeing something good. And so even Paul says, he says, listen, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm being pressured. I'm going through uh, all kinds of suffering and tests. He says, but there's a purpose behind it. And he sees the value behind the, the sacrifice, okay? He's not trying to get rich. He's not trying to, you know, to get anything out of this world. If anything, he's trying to get us out of the world, amen? And he's trying to get us into a position to where we are seeing the true riches of his glory, amen? Now, when we think of the word riches, we're thinking that God's going to give us something in the material realm, and that isn't the case. God doesn't care about what we have in the material realm. He, he actually cares about our soul. Amen? He's here to prosper our soul. Amen? That's the first initial uh, phase of life, is to restore our soul. Why do you think he says in Psalms 23 that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Why? Because He will restore our soul in the presence of our enemies. He'll place a table out there in the midst of our enemy, right? And who's our enemy? Death. Disease. Right? Sickness. All these things are the enemy, guys. It's not, it's not that Christ wants us to be in this stuff, but this stuff causes us to go through sufferings, right? And these sufferings have got a purpose and a plan. God sees value in the suffering. Why? Because <laughs> if, if, if we didn't go through suffering, uh, chances are we wouldn't appreciate the times when we do have that you know forgiveness of sin or, or the other things that I was talking about on Wednesday night, which is uh, pretty neat. I, I see I see Christ as being within us. He gives us the opportunity to receive freely the forgiveness of sin, which is a rich, which is His rich mercy. Right? It's the riches of His mercy that we receive forgiveness of sin. I'm, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that have got a ton of money that would be willing to spend umpteen millions of dollars if they can find rest for their soul, if they can find forgiveness for their sin. I'm telling you guys, they would spend an unbelievable amount of money if they knew that they could get right with God. You see, but God has already paid the price, hasn't He? Through, through His Son. Through that precious blood, right? It's through the Son that we find forgiveness of sin. It's through the Son that we find healing and peace for our souls, right? Even Jesus says in John, He says, the peace I have, the peace I'm willing to give you is not like the world gives. This peace uh, transcends Right? It, it goes beyond our reasoning. And it goes beyond, and it keeps our heart and our mind at peace, right? You guys understand that? These things are rich. Some people want to possess these kinds of things. They're willing to say, hey man, I'm willing to pay whatever you got, whatever is necessary, if I could just have that peace. Can you guys pay for it? Can you guys buy it? Can you guys work for it? You can't work for it, can you? You guys understand, it's a rich... I, I believe this is one of the riches of His glory. His forgiveness of sin. Is that thing... Man, that thing is, is a possession that a lot of people don't have. Another one that we talked about Wednesday night uh, is also found 
Let, let's turn to Romans chapter 2 real quick, okay? We'll be coming back to uh, Colossians, but let's turn to Romans real quick, chapter 2, verse number 4. And we talked about this a couple months ago. I love this verse. I love this verse, guys, because it really, truly uh, shows us a value, okay? Uh, and, and again, we're looking at our present uh, suffering, our present time of, of need, okay? And what do we get from God out of this suffering? What do we get from God, okay? Romans chapter 2, verse 4, he says, Or do you despise the riches of His goodness? You guys see that? So one of the riches of His glory is goodness, right? He says, don't despise the riches of His goodness. The riches of His forbearance. What is forbearance? Patience. Patience, right? His willingness not to judge right now. That is forbearance. Okay? He's willing to, to allow things to happen, but He's not willing to judge right now. That's forbearance. He's holding back punishment. Okay? Even as, even as adults, even as parents at times, we, we relent on our punishment, you know, to see if that thing will trigger something, you know, because we're, we love our children, right? We want our children to do well, and punishment's not, not in our DNA, right? And so we forbear the punishment in hoping that we can maybe talk some sense and, and see if they'll turn around, right? Because punishment is punishment, right? But, but forbearance is that loving kindness. It's that loving goodness of God that says, listen, I, I love you, but, but we're going to talk about this, okay? And see if you can turn around before it gets too late, amen? That's forbearance, okay? Our loving Father has a lot of forbearance. And then the last one is long-suffering. He, he, he again waits and waits and waits and waits. Listen, that, man, that, how, how precious is that? Is that long suffering? You know, listen. Go with me to to Exodus. This is crazy, guys. I seen this last night. Turn with me to Exodus, chapter thirty-three. Check this out, man. This is Moses talking. Okay, Moses is before God. Okay. Moses is before God and he's asking God. He says, God, I, I want to see your presence. I want to see your face. Right? How, how many of us would like to be in that position where we, we have that kind of relationship with God and, and, and you know, we're getting closer and closer. God's speaking to us. He's giving us all kinds of info. He's, he's given us the, the you know, our, our purpose and desires and you know, listen, one day, guys, one day we will see His face, right? One day we will see His face. But He says in uh, chapter 33, verse number 19, Moses says, or God says to Moses, He says, I will make all my goodness pass before you. You guys see that? And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. You guys see that? Okay. That is that long-suffering uh, DNA of God. Okay? He, he loves. Right? He loves. He's gracious. And He's compassionate. Right? You, you know what the other side of that is, right? It's judgment. Right? And go to chapter 34 and look at verse number 6. And here's God passing before Moses. And the Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, Long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity 
and transgression and sin. You guys see that, right? You guys actually notice something here? He actually categorizes these three things differently. He's not kind of grouping it all into one and calling it all sin. I, I think there's a reason behind that. You guys think? Okay. So he's forgiving iniquity, he's forgiving transgression, and he's forgiving sin. And by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Okay? So God is going to be God, right? God will be God. But right now, right now, He says, man, I'm full of compassion. I'm full of grace. I'm full of mercy, right? And He, he passes by us, right? And, and listen, if we were near God, if we were like Moses, man, we would be in fear of God. You know? Because God is so holy. God is so good. His, 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 his uh, nature, guys, is, is uh, something we would never even want to come close to. Because, man, we would see our own frailty. Why do you think Adam hid it? You know, is because he was no longer a part of that glorious body. He was no longer able to be in the presence of God because he was now unclean, right? And that's how we would all be. We would all be unclean if it wasn't for the blood of Christ. Amen. But even Christ in, in John chapter one, it says that the Word became flesh, right? And the and the flesh dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His what? His His uh. His, uh, and we beheld His glory, full of mercy and grace, right? So here's, here's Jesus showing us the mercy and grace of God as well. It, God is not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance, right? He's full of that grace, guys. And that's compassion and love. That thing is rich. Wouldn't we like to experience that richness of His love? Wouldn't we like to experience the richness of His grace and mercy? I would, amen? I, every single day, man, I experience a little bit more of His grace and mercy. Especially if I mess something up, right? Or do something wrong, man. I'm, I'm before God. I'm, I'm not before anyone else. I'm before God first, right? I'm before God. Why? Because it, it, in the end, it's me and Him. And if you guys ain't going to be near me. It's going to be me and Him. And I've got to have that grace of, upon me. Amen. I've got to have God's mercy upon me. Why? Because that's my final destination is to be in the presence of God. Amen. And I want to be pleasing. Amen. Going back to Colossians chapter 1, I want to find out what's pleasing God. Amen. That's my whole purpose in life now is to find out what's good and pleasing in His eyes. So I don't have to worry about that judgment. Amen? Because ultimately, God's given me everything I need for life and for godliness, right? So it's my responsibility now. He's placed in me the things that I need to do, right? He's given me everything I need. Now, I need to learn how to do it properly so that I'm pleasing to Him. Does that make sense? Okay? Now, turn with me. Man, God's given me a new, uh, a new direction here. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Someone said Proverbs this morning. And that thing just kind of... Ding! Proverbs chapter 1. Check this out, guys. You guys there? Yeah. Now you guys should be reading the Proverbs every day. Okay? Every day. There's 30 chapters. You can go through a chapter a day. And all I want you guys to do is find a certain verse or maybe a small passage in that. And God's going to speak to you. Just like He did to me last night. Okay? You don't necessarily have to do the 22nd for the 22nd 
chapter and so on and so forth or whatever day it happens to be. But just open up the Proverbs. The reason is, is because again, you're needing to be trained, right? You need to know what's pleasing to God, right? And I'm telling you the truth. The Proverbs are there to help you train up and to uh, find out what is that good and acceptable thing. Chapter 1, verse 7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? The, be the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of God? What is that? What does that mean to you? Is that something that's fearful? You know, scared? Is that that word? Is it scared? We shouldn't ever be scared. Especially if we're in, if we're in Christ, we should no longer be scared. See, because scared is the word fear, and fear has that tormenting thing behind it. And that torment comes from knowing that we're not right with God. See, that's not what he's talking about here. This is not having torment towards God. Because God loves you. Right? His thoughts are for you and not against you. Amen? He wants to give you a future and a hope. So this is not a tormenting fear. You shouldn't ever be in that place of torment because we have the blood of Christ who forgives us of our sin, right? That's the only reason why we would have that kind of fear of God is that we know that we are not clean before God. To see, Christ has given us that opportunity to overcome and to be washed by the blood so that we don't have to worry about the iniquities and, the, and everything else that was described in, in uh, Exodus chapter 33. Okay? But the fear of the Lord really is that respect, is that knowledge of who He is. Okay? It's like, uh, I think Michelle said it earlier, He's our Father. Right? And, and I, I listen, I, I was once young, and I did not respect my father growing up. If I could be honest. And most of us probably had the same issues, right? I'm just saying, that's the kind of life that most of us lead. There was no fear of our father. Unless the belt came out, right? And it was like, oh! But after a while, what would happen is if we were, you know, recognizing what pleases Dad and what doesn't please Dad, we would start working our way into that place of pleasing Him, right? And, and some of us would get it. Others of us would still be rebellious and, and, and here comes the bell again, right? But see, the fear of God is having that respect and knowledge and understanding of who He is and then understanding what pleases Him and what doesn't please Him. And that fear is going to keep us in that perspective of wanting to please Him. Does that make sense? It does, doesn't it? Because we start understanding, oh, this is what is good. Okay? And, and so we start putting away, what does 1 Corinthians 13 say? When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Why? Because I start realizing what is good. Right? So, but then he says, fools despise wisdom. Right? And what is wisdom? It's that knowledge of having something that you know the difference of. Right? And, and so, Fools despise. They don't want to know what uh, is pleasing to God. They don't care. Okay, they're holding in.